Hey folks, we're back with the Dr. Sarah Gottfried, always electrifying and delightful. And we are talking about, let's say you were an athlete in the past. Let's say you're not so much anymore. What do you do now? Sarah, what do you think? Well, I, I feel like you've described my husband. You know, my husband played tackle football for 12 years. He's an entrepreneur. He's in the green movement. And um, I still think that he has the expectation that he can eat the same volume that he did when he was doing two-a-day football practices. Like, he still has that mindset sort of every day. He hasn't adjusted how much he eats. So you actually had some great suggestions for the aging athlete who thinks that they can eat a box of cereal in a setting. Yeah, I think it, it, a lot of it has to do with, we were earlier talking about Joel Furman, the importance of vegetables, but I personally don't think you need to give up magnitudes of food. I actually think, as Joel says, eating a, if you are not eating pounds of food per day, that's an indication that you might not be eating the right kinds of food. So, because <laughs> anyway, so what I like to do, for example, is lots of vegetables, like lots of greens, like lots and lots and lots. Like I, I do not limit those. And in fact, I intentionally try to eat a lot of them. And I also just think people should keep in mind that when you stop training athletically, something is going to have to change about your diet. Like that seems obvious, but unless we consciously do something about it, it won't happen. It's so true. You know, my husband is, um, I love him and I love to talk about him and he doesn't mind, but he, um, he'll say to me when I make kale, for instance, he'll just look at me and he's just going to, he's just like, we've been together for so many years. When are you going to stop serving me kale? I hate it. I don't want to eat it. And last night I made dinner and he had, um, he had a small amount of brown rice. He's a lover of carbs and he's got a Mediterranean genotype, so he can actually have more carbs than me, because I'm a low-carb genotype. I had a bed of greens, but I kind of mixed it up so it wasn't all kale. It had some caramelized onions, and he loves those. What is it with guys and caramelized onions? I don't know. And then I had some red lentil hummus that I made with some chipotle, and I put that on top of this kale mixture with the onions, and he just totally dug it. So we're trying to find ways to get more of those vegetables inside this former football player. Sarah, you hit the nail on the head there. When, so think about what we traditionally use as filler, right? We all do this. That's what starch is. You have rolls. You have rice. You have pasta. Why? To fill you up. Rolls are literally served to fill you up. That is their purpose. So we need to have something else to take up that space in our stomach. Just use vegetables instead. Like I hated vegetables for my entire life up to about maybe seven years ago. Use kale, bed of kale, cooked kale, sauteed kale. Use a bed of sauteed onions, mushrooms, any kind of green. Like throw some coconut oil, throw some seasonings. Just make, use that as your rice. Use that as your filler. Use that as your starch. What do you think? I like it. I mean, that's the way I eat because I don't eat much in the way of grains. I just find that they don't work well in my body. I blimp up overnight <laughs> when I have grains. So I stay away from the grains. Occasionally I'll have a little quinoa, but most of the time I'm using greens as the backbone of every meal that I have. And you said, I'm sorry, you said grains. You mean vegetables. I'm using greens. Yeah, I just mixed oh, up greens, greens and grains. <laughs> I love the greens. I got to stay away from the grains. <laughs> uh, well, and Sarah, we hear so much just really quickly uh, about healthy whole grains, but I've always been a little confused by that because sure, whole grains are healthy compared to sugar, but wouldn't we just be better off eating more vegetables? I think so. You know, I'm still trying to wrap my head around the literature on grains. I think that there's some people who do fine with whole grains. And then there are those of us who have such exquisite insulin receptors, such exquisite leptin receptors that we don't do well on grains. So my focus really is on greens, vegetables, protein, like really healthy sources of protein. I also focus on fats, and I, as I mentioned in a previous session, I need more of the plant-based fats, the PUFAs, the polyunsaturated fats, compared to saturated fats. That's one of the ways that I maintain my weight as I age. 
So, Sarah, let's do one more segment here because we've got a busy day, I know. But, folks, when we come back, you'll notice Sarah just mentioned protein. And you'll also notice that we've been talking a lot about vegetables. Sometimes, though, you might be wondering, a lot of the people that I hear promoting vegetables also say protein causes cancer. Hmm. Topic for another conversation. See you in a bit. Thank you.